Okay, so today we are going to talk about angina and evaluation of chest pain. First of all, we need to classify angina. Classical angina is the one that has three points. One, it has typical quality pressure or crushing substernal chest pain. It's as if someone has put weights on their chest, pain that radiates toward the jaw and the left arm. It is provoked by exercise and emotional upheaval. And it is relieved by nitroglycerin or rest. Then there is atypical angina. Atypical angina is the one that has two of the classical angina characters. Non-anginal pain. Non-anginal pain is the one that has either one or none of the classical angina features. Chest pain having no or one of the classical angina features is called a non-anginal pain. This is the main classification of angina. Now we'll be talking about some atypical anginas, how different presentation of angina can be. Decubitus angina is the one that appears whenever patient lies flat. It goes away when he sits up. Warm-up angina is the one that appears whenever patient starts doing exercise, but as he continues doing exercise, the pain goes away. Chest pain that appears when patient starts exercise, but disappears later during exercise. Now, whenever a patient presents to you with chest pain, your level of suspicion for cardiac pathology should be high. You have to take focused history, do physical exam, check his vitals and obtain venous access. Then you have to see whether this patient is stable or unstable. If the patient is unstable, then you need to immediately stabilize his hemodynamics. If the patient is dropping blood pressure, if he is bradycardic, you have to stabilize him first. Then you have to look for the underlying cause. If the patient is stable, then you need to order few tests. The first and the foremost is ECG. Then cardiac enzymes and chest x-ray. ECG and cardiac enzymes will tell you about the condition of heart and chest x-ray will help you rule out other pulmonary causes that can cause chest pain. Then you have to administer aspirin if the risk of aortic dissection is low. How will you know that this patient is having an aortic dissection? While you were performing physical exam, you have to check blood pressure in both arms. If the blood pressure in both arms is different, then it means that there is a risk that this patient is having an aortic dissection right now. This patient is internally bleeding. And if you administer aspirin in such case, that patient will bleed to death because aspiration thins blood. It inhibits clotting. And you also have to give sublingual nitroglycerin. Aspirin, if given in the first few minutes of the chest pain, will save lives. Aspirin reduces mortality. It has a great mortality benefit. Other than that, sublingual nitroglycerin will also cause vasodilation of the cardiac blood vessels, increasing the blood supply to heart. And then you need to remember one thing about sublingual nitroglycerin, that when you were doing physical exam and you saw that the patient is hypotensive and bradycardic, then there is a chance that this patient might be having an inferior wall MI. An inferior wall MI, a right-sided heart MI that, uh, uh, that causes wiggle stimulation. That wiggle stimulation causes blood pressure to drop and bradycardia. So in such case, you do not give nitroglycerin because it will further exacerbate hypotension. It, uh, nitroglycerin causes venodilation that decreases preload to the right side of heart and heart function will further decrease. And then you have to administer oxygen because that stenosed vessel that is not feeding the heart properly, that little amount of blood reaching the heart is fully saturated with oxygen now. The first result that you will receive will be of ECG. And the most important thing in ECG is that you have to see whether there is ST segment elevation or not. If there is ST segment elevation in ECG, then it means that it is myocardial infarction, permanent damage to the heart has taken place. And you have to initiate the protocols for the management of a STEMI. I have talked about STEMI in detail in my video on management of myocardial infarction. This is an ECG that you receive. And if you notice, these are all ST segment elevations in these leads 2, 3, AVF, V3, and V4. Then sometime it happens that ECG is not showing ST segment elevation, but there are certain changes 
that you see maybe there is st segment depression on ecg that show that there is some insult going on with the heart that is not consistent with the st segment elevation mi but some damage is going on now there is no st segment elevation but there are certain changes on ecg the next thing is that you have also ordered cardiac enzymes you have to assess cardiac enzymes now to see that what situation what is the situation of the heart i'll briefly talk about cardiac markers first cardiac markers are basically cardiac enzymes that are present in the cells of the heart whenever there is damage to the cells of the heart those damaged cells release cardiac enzymes in blood so cardiac enzymes in the blood show that there is some permanent damage into the heart the most important cardiac marker is troponin troponin is elevated within 6 hours of mi and it remains elevated for 1 to 2 weeks troponin is highly specific for mi and it is the one that you must remember that it is the best test for initial diagnosis of an mi then there is another marker ckmb ckmb is not very specific for heart ckmb is also elevated whenever there is muscle damage so troponins are the ones that are used for the initial diagnosis ckmb are also important what is the importance of ckmb ckmb return back to normal within 48 to 72 hours so these levels fall back to normal within 3 days so this thing is important because if the patient had first mi and you diagnosed that patient using troponins for initial diagnosis now this patient has developed second mi within that week within that week that de that patient developed a second mi now you cannot use troponins because troponins remain elevated for 1 to 2 weeks to check reinfarction to check the second mi you should go for ckmb now because ckmb will return back to normal within 3 days and if on fifth day of admission that patient is having a second mi you check the ckmb levels and if they are elevated on the fifth day it means that that patient is had a reinfarction a second mi so they are the best test to diagnose reinfarction and troponin are the best test for initial diagnosis so you assess the cardiac markers if cardiac markers are elevated it means that the patient had an mi patient had a myocardial infarction but there was no st segment elevation no st segment elevation mi it means that there were changes in ecg that were not consistent with the st segment elevation but cardiac markers told you that yes there was an mi if the cardiac markers are normal it means that there was an insult to the heart that ecg represented either as st segment depression or either as some changes but there was no permanent damage to the heart there was no permanent damage done to the heart and the cardiac markers are normal so it means that that is unstable angina and then if the ecg is normal if ecg is not showing you any findings if ecg is normal then you have to actually think that whether this chest pain is due to a cardiac pathology or not maybe it's a pulmonary cause causing chest pain maybe it's a git cause causing chest pain so we ordered chest x ray to rule out pulmonary causes and if chest x ray gives you finding if chest x ray tells you that yes there is either pneumonia there is either pleural effusion or aortic dissection so in aortic dissection the mediastinum will be dilated so if if there are certain positive findings on the chest x ray it means that maybe this was not a cardiac pathology causing chest pain maybe it was some other system causing chest pain and you have to investigate it further and find out those causes and if chest x ray is not diagnostic if chest x ray is not showing you anything and ecg is also normal then it means that there are no pulmonary causes causing chest pain and ecg is also normal you have already ordered cardiac enzymes sometime it happens that you find no findings on uh, ecg but cardiac markers are elevated there was damage to the heart that was not picked up by ecg so if there are findings on ecg if there is st segment elevation on ecg it means that the patient had an mi but if there are no findings it does not mean that there was no insult to the heart you should look for cardiac enzymes if the cardiac enzymes are elevated if the troponins are elevated they are very specific for cardiac damage you assess the cardiac markers and if the cardiac markers are elevated it means that that patient was having an mi and if the cardiac markers are normal cardiac markers 
are negative cardiac markers are normal chest x ray is normal ecg is normal it means that patient did not have any mi patient did not develop myocardial infarction there was no permanent damage done to the heart but you still are suspicious that ecg is normal cardiac enzymes are normal but you still are suspicious that this chest pain was due to a cardiac pathology maybe this patient was having angina that did not show anything on ecg that did not cause permanent damage to the heart therefore the cardiac markers were normal so if the patient had an episode of angina and now right now when i am testing when i am doing all these tests that patient is normal so to to find that uh, that hidden angina to find that hidden pathology what you need to do is you need to do stress testing what you do in stress testing is you basically give certain stress to heart you make the heart pump more when the heart beats more oxygen demand of the heart increases when oxygen demand to the heart increases if there is a stenosed vessel a vessel that is not able to fulfill the demands of the heart the oxygen uh, supply to the heart will decrease and heart will go into hypoxia and you in that hypoxic situation you do ecg you do echo and you find out that stress to the heart you find out the hypoxic insult to the heart so you do the stress testing for stress testing the first thing you can do is you can ask that whether this patient can exercise or not if the patient is able to exercise then you have to see that whether this patient's previous ecg this ecg was normal or abnormal if this patient's previous ecg is normal then you have to go for exercise ecg you repeat ecg while this patient is doing exercise while this patient is in stress you repeat the ecg and if the previous ecg was normal and there is certain cardiac pathology if there is coronary artery stenosis that exercise ecg will be abnormal now and you pick up that abnormality through exercise ecg you do exercise ecg and you receive an ecg like this an ecg that is having st segment depression in all these leads st segment depression shows that there is ischemia hypoxia to the heart his heart is ischemic right now and you induced this ischemia and you picked it up on ecg which was previously normal if the patient is able to do exercise but his previous ecg was not normal his previous ecg showed finding or his previous ecg a year ago he had an mi and there are certain pathological q waves present in his ecg and and in such situation that patient is actually having a pathological heart there is certain dead tissue present in the heart due to that previous mi so in that situation it's not good that you go for exercise ecg it's better that you go for exercise imaging what you do in exercise imaging is you do echo and when you are doing echo you actually pick up that dead part of the heart you see that that dead part of the heart is not moving this is a beautiful video showing how exercise imaging tells you the dead tissue that is not moving you do the exercise imaging and you do exercise ecg and you get positive finding but what if the patient cannot do exercise if patient is unable to do exercise then you have to pharmacologically stimulate the heart you have to give certain drugs like dobutamine that will pump the heart that will make the heart work more and when the heart will work more its oxygen demand will increase and if there is oxygen demand and oxygen supply are unequal there will be hypoxia ischemia that you will pick up by either ecg or echo if all of these tests show you positive finding that yes there is hypoxia there is ischemia to the heart the vessels are stenosed now you have to see which vessel is stenosed and how many of the vessels are stenosed and the extent of their stenosis all of this information can be obtained by coronary angiography what you do in coronary angiography you give a dye to a person you inject a dye in the blood and when that dye enters heart enters coronary arteries you take the pictures if there is stenosis if the path is narrow that dye will show a thin line in that artery this is a picture showing stenosis of this part in the coronary artery this part 
the dye has got very very thin showing the extent of stenosis so when you do coronary angiography and you see the extent of stenosis now you have to decide what you need to go for if the patient is eligible for coronary artery bypass graft if there is a triple vessel disease if there are three vessels that are blocked or if the left main artery is blocked then patient this patient is eligible to go for a coronary artery bypass graft what you do in coronary bypass is that you take a vessel from any other part of the body like saphenous vein and you actually bypass that stenosed area in the heart so you have to further assess the patient and see explore your clinical options in summary if a patient presents to you with chest pain your level of suspicion for cardiac pathology must be high for that purpose if the patient is unstable you have to stabilize hemodynamics and go for the underlying pathology if the patient is stable you need to go for ecg the most important one the most urgent one that will give you the earliest results cardiac enzymes and chest x ray to rule out other causes of uh, chest pain like pneumonia or pleural effusion or things like that you have to give administer aspirin as soon as possible preferably oral reduces mortality sublingual nitroglycerin not if the patient is hypotensive or bradycardic you have to administer oxygen if if the ecg is consistent with mi yes then you have to see if there is st segment elevation or not if there is no st segment elevation check cardiac enzymes if cardiac enzymes are elevated it is non st segment elevation mi mi is there but that is not consistent with st segment elevation if the uh, if the cardiac markers are normal it means that the patient is having an unstable angina there is a angina ischemia going on but there is no permanent damage to the heart if the ecg is normal then you have to see chest x ray if chest x ray gives you to cause like pleural effusion pneumonia then you have to treat that cause if chest x ray is not showing you anything then you have to assess cardiac enzymes if cardiac enzymes are normal chest x ray is normal ecg is normal and you are suspicious that this patient is have actually having an a, a cardiac pathology a cardiac chest pain then you have to go induce stress to the heart and by inducing stress to the heart you see whether this patient is having ischemia to the heart or not if the patient is able to exercise you see whether this patient is having an a normal ecg or not if the previous ecg is normal then you can go for exercise ecg if previous ecg is not normal if the previous if previously patient had an mi then it's not good to go for exercise ecg it's better that you go for exercise imaging and you see the dead part of the heart if the patient cannot do exercise then you have to go for pharmacological stimulation of the heart by dobutamine diperidamol and then if all these Uh, tests give you a positive finding that yes this patient is having a stenosis of the heart vessel then you have to go and actually visualize those vessels by coronary angiography by coronary angiography you decide how much vessels are stenosed and what intervention can save this patient's life so this was chest pain and angina thank you very much